Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Muckle Lover and thank you for rejoining me here in the end of a new beginning mod in which we're playing as that big old thick long boy Russian Empire. Right now, or actually protecting the Jews, if you didn't know that. The Jews are a minority that have been persecuted for far too long. We must put an end to this. Uh, off screen, I've already gone ahead to emancipate the serfs, so now they're all free when we get more legislative power. And additionally, we went, what was it? There's something here, no separation, Victorian army, something about serfdom. Uh, we have maximum work hours, which is cool. We're, we love the Jewish people here now. Apparently we didn't really get like them before. Whatever, it is what it is. Victorian army, I forget where it is. Was it down here, Few, federal control? Because there was serfdom here as well. No federalism, federal control, no separata separation. Uh, my goodness, where can I, I cannot find it, can I? Restricted attendance. Oh, I'll find it soon enough. I, I, I know. Oh, legal? No. That's is that child labor? Ah, uh, child labor. Anyways, land estates. Oh, here we go. We went. We had served him, and then we rose up all the way up to land estates, in which we lose political power. We actually lose 0.4 more political power. We lost five percent recruitable population, as well as infrastructure. And but we got infrastructure construction speed. We lost that debuff to construction. We lost quite a few consumer goods factories, but we didn't. We're not losing any more weekly stability war support, which is. I didn't know that we were losing that, but it is what it is, and we had less defense on core territory and less civilian factory construction speed, but at least we're on now land estates, even though we're still in an Nigerian economy, which sucks, but, and the conscription, which we lose a lot of manpower, but we get way more legislative power gain, construction speed, factory output, which would be nice, but I think we'll go and enact radical economic reforms. We simply, because of a variety of reasons, cannot industrialize as fast as other countries, but by cutting expenses whenever or everywhere we can, allowing easy entrepreneurship and lessening the oppression of the other nationalities which exist within our country, we can greatly speed up the modernization of our homeland. Over this doesn't come and backfire on us, which is literally almost about 100 days left. I would like to do this, though. Nah, I'm just kidding. I want to set up the government of Alaska. If we can keep Alaska, that'd be really, really great. The trans Siberian Railway will be good. Howitzers are very nice to grab. And I did that one off screen just because I think I prefer these over those. Even though we might research those later on. Yeah, might as well go for rifled howitzers because we don't want to produce garbage. But we're going to go ahead and put on some howitzers because we love things that go boom here on this channel. And board guns, goodbye. Uh, howitzers are where it's at. As well as we need more mini rifles, which are better rifles than what we had previously. As well as Victorian uniforms. Other than that, I don't think I've done much else off screen. I did this a little bit. Dedicate industrial power to... Uh, I mean, does it really benefit us in any way? When I played this as Prussia, or the Kingdom of Prussia to form Germany, it didn't really do much. I mean, we already did 2%, but we didn't get any real benefits to that, so I don't see any point to do that. We could send more support to the British, but... Wow. Oh, yeah, it's a speech, whatever. Uh, they're doing really... Who's oh, that? Is that Nyan Rebellion? Wow. The. I'm sure there's not a lot of portraits of you in real life, but... What is wrong with your face, sir? Do you have horns coming out of your the sides of your mouth? Holy cow, that is a weird Chinese guy. Oh boy, that is not pretty. But you know what? I guess to exist, you don't have to be pretty. Go figure. Um, I'm not saying I'm pretty. <laughs> but let's be real, I totally am. <laughs> Whatever. We got a lot of comments to go through. Uh, let's see. Max, factory, factory output would be nice. Uh, infrastructure. Uh, it is 1860, so happy 1860, everyone. Hope you're having a great, 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 great year. Monthly population, even though we have a population of 111 million, it's still not enough. No opposition left, great. The Russian Empire is great, but a lot of comments. First of all, uh, someone recommends we choose focuses that decrease unrest, especially in territories that have a lot of different nationalities or ethnicities, such as the Poles, the Finns maybe, uh, the Baltic, you know, Lithuanians, Estonians, Latvians, not the Caucasus region because the Caucasus region deserves to die, Ukrainians maybe, Central Asians maybe... So we'll try that. Uh, with Poland and Finland, go with reestablish their diet if possible. Maybe we'll do that. And for and we ha when we do have revolts, we should go really harsh on them and crack down on them as hard as possible. And make sure we break their backs and they can never rise up again. Sounds like fun. Let's see. Another comment was, yeah, for the, when we do the, get to the Baltic section, do the Lithuanian National Revival. Now, I know this place has a lot of stuff. Polish? Huh, okay. Literally part again. Finland, yeah, reestablish their diet. There's that. Abolish the Grand Duchy. I kind of want to do that one. Actually, I really want to do that one. Support Russian immigration. That's not bad. Support foreign investment. Okay. Huh. And Oh, we can integrate Finland eventually. That's kind of cool. It's an artificial concept. She must be, become part of the Russian Empire. That'd be kind of really cool, actually. So we need to expand Helsinki's port. As well as support Russian immigration. Oh, well then, why do we want to do that? Reestablish the diet? Huh. Platon Lorakowski as a governor of Finland. Okay, that's interesting. Organic chemistry? Huh, okay, that's nice. Uh, let's go with that one. Mechanized farming just because we can. 
don't want to stop time here because it takes forever. And for the Ukraine, oh, Wittenberg proposes establishing friendship. Today we receive a letter from the Kingdom of Wittenberg, stating that Wilhelm I would personally like to establish a lasting friendship and foreign policy with us. However, we've also received a word that... <clears throat> That we're not the only ones who receive such letters. We, while we would not lose anything if we would accept, we should be aware that this kind of opportunism could go either way, lead to difficulties later, or become a great stone to step on later. Um, sure. On the origins of species, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Great, great, great. And now for the Ukraine. Ah, pretty big guy, huh? Oh, there it is. Promote the Lithuanian national revival. Become slightly more rebellious? Repress... Re Lithuanian culture. Support Balt's national awakening. Slightly more compliant. Of support the German elite. Promote Drahomanov, which I think someone recommended we do that one. Support Novorossiya. The greenery of Europe, Russia's frontier. Protect Crimea. Tighten the grip on Poland. Establish a Polish diet. End the Russification in Poland. And force justification in Poland sounds like a lot more fun. Uh, they actually become free, huh? Okay. Visual defense scheme and Russification. The question of Russification requires expand Helsinki's port. So we probably won't be able to integrate Finland, which kind of sucks, but... Okay, maybe we'll do that one. And so we've got quite a few days left of that. Twelve days left for that. Not bad. And we still have more comms to go through as well. But let's read the next couple folks is Because I don't know if there's going to be a lot of things that happen here. Maybe, maybe not. It is 60, so... After this one, we probably want to go with economic liberalization. Because we do need to industrialize as fast as possible. Wow, we lose a lot of consumer goods for... Wow, we get a lot more construction speed, which is kind of nice. Finish the Warsaw St. Petersburg Railway. One infrastructure level in Tsk, Vilno, and Blyask. Stuck. Alright. Oh, can we do... We can't do one either, so... Moscow starts in Railway, huh? Nice. Socket Bayonets. Not bad. There's got to be more. More breakthrough and soft attack is what we like. All right, it's almost done. Once you get three percent more political power, or stability, I mean, we lose a hundred political power, and we get a research bonus for socio and economic humanities. Sure, event. I love the event, which gives us political power. Let's do economic liberalization. There isn't much time. Russia must industrialize rapidly to not fall apart. With, with political liberalization, must come economic liberalization. Will allow the people to act so that empire may prosper. Uh, we'll see what happens. Other comments include spread out divisions due to attrition. Yeah, uh, I discovered that last time. Oh, there goes the graphic stuff again. But, uh, yeah, attrition is really bad in this game. Or not... Yeah, it is really bad in this... The mod. And, you know, other mods too, but... Oh, my goodness, as we discovered yesterday. Oh, it's so bad, especially with the graphical glitches. And I hate the Caucasus region so much right now. And maybe more in the last video, but... And it was devastating. Look at... Are you, are you okay over here? Like, you have an, you know, an attack of some sort. That's not very healthy, man. But whatever, who am I? Cool. Oh, do you have an upgrade, Pavel? Probably not. Nothing interesting. Nope. Let's see. Other people want me to play as a Qing Empire. Some people want me to play as a Taiping Empire. Now, after seeing this, I probably will play as a Taiping Empire. The Heavenly Kingdom. He's got a red thing. Hong Zhu Quan. He's a brother of Jesus, right? Cool. So I will play as him sometime. I'm not really sure, especially after seeing how, how successful he's becoming right now. It's incredibly successful. Ridiculously successful, especially against the Empire of the Great Qing Empire. Emperor Xi'an Feng, which I think Alex Rember might have played, I think. So, cool. Uh, let's see, someone recommends we invade Asia, invade India. I don't know, man. India seems kind of like a mess. And I don't think the UK is doing really great against them right now, but we'll have to wait and see. Let's see. And then someone recommends we go fully liberal, disown our heir, and get rid of Alexander II, and survive all the assassination attempts. You guys are reading a lot more into this, and you probably know your history better than I do about middle to late 19th century Russia. Because I don't know that much about it. So, Alexander II here, though, he does give us 10% stability, so I think he's okay. I mean, we have no other head of state, and we should disinherit his heir, but I don't... Is there a way for us to check on who our heir is? I'd love to have that ability. Just because I'm not sure, like, if that's good. Because Just because you get rid of your heir doesn't mean the next heir is going to be any better. It could be... A, he or she could be uh, so much worse. So much worse. So, it's not always good to get rid of your heirs, but, you know, who am I? But we're going to get some rifled howitzers next, and follow it up with, ooh, aviation stuff. I'll do the aviation stuff that gives us more daily air XP, but... Political advisor costs, that's not bad. More legislative power, I like that too. Civilian, oh, i got to go. 46 days, capitalism? In 1860, we, in Russia, we can figure out how to do capitalism. Finally. Liberalization. Cool. But other than that, I mean, oh, 
started Piedmont's going to war with a lot of people. They did beat up the British. Wow, they're looking kind of green. Um, unless something major happens, I think I'll probably just do a lot of the focuses off screen as well. Since we have the political power, we might as well invest more here. We need one, two, three, four, five. So actually, we have enough already. It's not bad. I would like to do this one. We need interchangeable parts. Oh, where is that one then? That's a good thing to look up then. And dust interchangeable parts. Um, process engineering, maybe synthetics. It obviously, wouldn't be under biochemistry. Interchangeable parts. Oh crud! Where is that? Oh, that's not good. Because if I play as another nation, we're gonna need to know where that is. And interchangeable parts. Mechanical engineering, maybe. Steam locomotives, early trains, no. I don't think it's here either. A little bit of lag. Just your tools, factory era twos, which actually this one's not bad either to get. I'm gonna need a lot of this. Oh, there it is. Oh, we need that one. Okay. So that we'll go with that one next then. What's so once this one's done, we'll go back over to here, get machine tools, or interchangeable parts, and then we will begin industrializing, which costs a lot of PP, so we need to gather a lot of PP. Um, I don't. Th I think we're going to keep this for now, which will be okay. We don't care about the religious affairs right now. Gather political legitimacy. We're doing relatively okay. So, I mean, I would really like to know who our heir is, because I don't want to get rid of someone who might be really good. We got a whole world's fair, rewards of international recognition and prestige. Unless we're like eighth great power in the world. I'm not really probably going to do that. We're already colonizing some more, so we're colonizing as fast as we can, even though it doesn't look like it's having any sort of effect right now. And for this one, once it hits 1864, then we can do that stuff, so we can just kind of wait. But let's do a few focuses together, on, and uh, then I'll go off screen and just keep doing some more stuff. Hey, we made another factory, but not really. Oh, man. So after economic liberalization, actually, when's the next research done first before we do this? Because I don't think there's any sort of tax that we really need to get done right now, or... Stuff like that, not text, but like ministers and such. So, interchangeable parts. That takes almost 300 days. My goodness. So bad. Alright, so six five does this. Urbanization committee regarding urbanization of Russia cities. Uh, that's 40 days. That's actually not too bad. Well, we can't take this either. That's to be 1861, which is next year. Autocompletes. Liberalize a higher education. We can probably do that one. More centrism. Judiciary reforms. End the censorship. Limit the censorship. Land redistribution. That's not bad. Land states with land purchase. That's actually not too bad. I kind of actually want to do that one as fast as possible. End of censorship is okay as well. Uh, but... That's the urbanization committee. Now that serfdom has been abolished, many freed peasants are moving to the cities by providing economic incentives. Such as tax exemptions and by supporting the education, we'll be able to, in the long run, expand the Russian middle class, which is nice. Followed up after that one, we're probably going to do liberalized higher education. Education can't be so much regulated, it is killing our potential in science and innovations and discoveries. Alright everyone, so we can't take this one yet, liberalize the higher education because, well, Apparently, we need to institute extensive self-governance first. We must create regional parliaments across the nation to advise local gover governors. We'll do that one eventually, and we'll also do liberalize higher education, but we're currently doing found the Ministry of Natural Resources. We must found a ministry to support the development of the Russian mining industry. We'll make a fortune out of this, and this will greatly quicken the industrialization process in our country. <coughs> Excuse me, which is good, but with the previous focus that we just completed. Now we can urbanize. WIP. WIP. I love whips, but what this one refers to probably is work in progress. So, we can support Kiev's urbanization. We lose factories to get more manpower in a certain place and uh, building some Kiev, while other places lose manpower. Um, that's nice. Go to start some first. That's just we're going to lose stuff anyway. So go ahead and do that. 30 days, not bad. It only costs us our entire industrial base. Go figure. So other than that, I think that's it. Oh, Jesus, no. Um, I think that's it. Stagnation, disencouraged, people don't have babies. That's not bad for consumer goods restricted. Uh, enforced baby making. Now that sounds kind of wild. Man, can you... Can you imagine that in 2021, wherever you live? That'd be kind of wild. Oh, the post-Crimean War reforms. Our defeat in the Crimean War has clearly, clearly shown our weaknesses, which has led to more pop, more people being dissatisfied with the style of rulership. To amend the people's opinion, our King Alexander II started to introduce many liberal reforms, like the emancipation of the Russian serfs. Virtue was called Alexander the Liberator. And so the liberalization of our country begins. Why do we get that now? I've been liberalizing for a while. Didn't you see what we're doing? 
We're trying to urbanize. We're literally forcing urbanization. So, okay. It's not 1861. I thought we were going to get that soon. Uh, we could develop the homeland, but we already lost a lot of civilian factories right now. So let's, uh, let's, let's wait. Let's wait. How about that? Let's wait. We have no naval infrastructure, which is fine. I don't want to lose any more consumer goods for now. There's no point to do that for us. I would like to do basic infrastructure, but we're not building infrastructure yet. And I don't want to lose more consumer goods like normal. Police force is fine. Healthcare. I do want to go excellent healthcare, which hurts our consumer goods by quite a bit. But you do get a lot more legislative power gain. A little bit more legislative power gain while losing more, even more legislative power gain while getting more monthly population because we love, maybe, love making babies here. I'm not really sure we should choose. Research speed, an efficient administrator, or a great urbanizer, which sounds like we should go with this guy just because it sounds like we're trying to urbanize, especially trying to build up these cities. Oh my goodness, it takes so long to build up the cities. It takes months on end. Oh my goodness. But that's okay, because we're still trying to do some early medicine. We're still doing interchangeable parts. And at this point, well, it's okay. And I do want to show you what we do with this. I would like to finish the Warsaw Petersburg Railway. He has 1,600 days to build one infrastructure in three places. That's a long time. I want to wait to do those just because um, I want to build a bigger industrial base. That's really why I want to do that first. But we'll probably expand the Russian ra railway network as well, which can hurt consumer goods, but infrastructure construction speed. So realistically, it sounds like you should take this one and then finish the railway, but Abraham Lincoln becomes 1860 president-elect. Oh, well, whatever. Encourage capitalism. What does this one do? Uh, high taxes with standard taxes. Didn't we go with standard taxes, like, earlier? Limit exports with export focus. John J. Hughes becomes their advisor. Alaskan gold rush. Ooh. Immigration to Alaska? Gold, gold. That sounds like fun. Support Volga German farms. Factories in Saritsyn. Not bad. Industrialize the empire. Support the coal mining industries. Not bad. Coal extraction. I like extraction. So, we got a while to do a lot of things. I'd love to do more railroad... Railroad? railroad stuff but I still would like to do this one and I want to get to liberalize higher education and I would like to get judicial reforms just because you can you lose a little a little bit of political power get more stability even though we're already at 99% uh, land redistribution doesn't sound great but it's not bad we get just a lot more benefits more daily PP consumer goods stability civilian infrastructure construction infrastructure construction speed goes down civilian factory construction speed does go up though so oh uh, we can't do this one the peasant land book land bank well that's fine whatever it is what it is. I want a way to do that one. I want to build ourselves up a little bit more first. So let's go ahead and do this one. Oh, we get end conscription too. Oh. Oh, I think that'd be good. We are keeping male population too long conscripted in the army. It has, it has an awful impact on society and industry. Oh, yeah. I want more construction speed. I want better consumer goods factories, man. I don't want to lose millions of soldiers right now, but we do get more legislative power. Limited conscription probably is the way to go, but we have a few more things we should do here as well. Coal extraction, we use a lot more civilian factories. We get more... Well, I don't really need to do this yet, so... I think we can wait, and if there's anything that happens, I'll, uh, let's, I'll show you. And here we are, my friends, with the Tsushima incident. Your Highness, under your orders, a group of our sailors led by Nikolai Berev have tried to land at Tsushima, a Japanese island we don't have access to. The cowardly Japanese were scared by this move and invited the British to defend Tsushima. This led to a second cruiser of ours setting off to Tsushima to help protect us or protect our interests. Berelev finally decided to send an expedition to land on the island, even though they were and are still being watched by the two Japanese and one British warship, and currently are doing institute extensive self-governance. Finally, so we can do that one. Uh, and then we'll probably liberalize just because we can. So before we click on that, let's go ahead and come over here and say, send a ship to, Tsui, to Tsushima. The islands of Tsushima, currently belonging to the Japanese, is an imperial strategic asset between the Sea of Japan and the Yellow Sea. We should aim to obtain control over it, and thus we should send a ship. This could get out of hand. And as you can see, we have the Confederates here. They're just doing their little stuff, you know. We're going to wait for Florida to join them. All right, very nice. And hey, there we go. We also got interchangeable parts. Great timing. Begin industrialization. Nice. Hopefully it's not going to be too bad for us, but you never know. Actually, you guys probably do know a little bit better than me. I'd like to do that one. So, car cordless steam engine. Thank you very much. And what we shall do is liberalize the higher education. Education can't be so much regulated. It is killing your potential in science, innovations, and discoveries, which I know I already read, but hey, whatever. I kind of want to see what will happen with the, the Tsushima thing, though. I'm kind of interested in see what would happen. So, Hmm... I guess we can grab this one. More monthly population. Hygiene. Pfft, hygiene. Do we need to be hygienic here? 
Come on, man. Who needs hygiene? The Warsaw Massacres of 1861. In Warsaw, protest was organized by students of the Warsaw School of Fine Arts and the Medical Surgical Academy. They demanded social reforms and release of the people who were arrested in previous protests. Their army opened fire on them, killing five protesters, and entered the churches in which the protesters were shooting themselves. Soon the churches were closed, and in sign of solidarity, Rabbi Isaac Kremsky ordered to close all of Warsaw synagogues. Later, the protesters had sent out a civic delegation to Mikhail Gorkachakov, demanding to, among others, bury the corpses of killed protesters and to release arrested demonstrators. Will they ever stop revolting? Probably not. The Bezna Uprising. The peasants of the village of Bezna has risen up against their serfdom, as the great news of emancipation has not yet reached them. The soldiers of the Kazan Givernet, Givernet, others those Governet, have rushed to the village to take back control, leading to a huge fight, leaving thousands of peasants and 20 soldiers dead. We have never. We have replaced the governor of Kazan to make sure that something like this never happens again. Crush them? You know, it's South Dagestan. Do I really care about how they feel, how they really want to act after they, like, just took forever for us to kill? Do I really care about them? No, I don't. But expel the Circassians? We're almost done with that 212 days. We'll have some more manpower in Trebizond, Tibez, Ashkabuk, Semi Palatinsk. Which, actually, let's go over that one. semi -Palatinsk. Ah, good. And then we get a core in Western Circassia, which would be actually nice. Which would be actually... Oh, right here. Oh, it's not a core. We get more core population, which is nice, but hey, whatever. Gr Grenadier Regiment. And let's do one more focus together, maybe. We'll see what happens. Oh, look, we're six in the world. Not bad. Not bad at all. In which we are just... Oh, this is so bad. It is so bad. I did grab that one guy. We get Nicolas Benoist. Benoit. Whatever it is. Oh, that's so bad. I wonder when rapid industrialization... Oh, there we go. Look at that. It's really... That's why we're losing so much. But we get much faster construction speed, which is nice. Military factory construction speed looks super bad, though. Wow. That is not bueno. We have a lot of PP for now. But we might as well keep it, because you never know if you need more of it. So... Oh, send a second ship to Tsushima. We'll send a second ship to resolve the situation there and further establish a hold over the island. Tsushima coastline charter. We've drafted a charter stating that the Russian Empire will be allowed to use the coast on Tsushima for naval operations. Now let's see if the Japanese and the Tsushima authorities agree. Well, let's see what happens. And I'd like to go to this one, but whatever. We can still do some extraction, but we're already doing... Well, Britain stands on Japan's side. The UK has... has uh, but just publicly announced that it is back in the Japanese Empire in the ongoing Tsushima crisis. This means that if a war should erupt over the island, we'll most likely have to fight off the British as well as the Japanese. This is bad for us. As well as the local authorities of Tsushima refuse the coastline charter, seeing that they will not allow Russian interference or influence on the island, especially by our illegitimate means in the, after the recent clashes on the island. What is the response to this? I'll be honest, man. We don't really have too much of a navy over here. So... We have a port over there, but we have little, you know, ships. We could probably beat these guys up quite a bit. Um, we will have to back down then. Would that hurt us badly? Maybe lose a little bit of stability. We will not back down. Um, hmm. I don't remember ever the Russians ever owning this island up here. So let's just go. Let's just back down. That's fine with me. I don't. I, if anything, I want to get. Oh, back down. Is that a good thing to do? Um, hmm. They've been trying to acquire the strategically important naval base in order to strengthen the power in the area. I don't know if that's a struggle to do or not. I want Amur, of course. I want Tainda. I want Khabarovka, as well as Haishenwai. That's what I want. I don't know why we're going to claim th that island first before we claim this stuff. The new Minister of War has been appointed, though. It was a long time ago since enemy forces invaded our motherland. First time since the Napoleonic Wars, our armies fought bravely, but this time we have lost. But uh, now we have to reconsider new reforms to prove it. After the Russian defeat in the Crimean War, the Minister of War, Count Dmitry Milutin, who held the position from, this, from 1861 to 1881, 1881 uh, Milutin's long tenure abolished the system, uh, this, where children were conscripted and resulted in a levy system being introduced in Russian military districts being created across the country. The system of military education was also reformed, and elementary education was made available to all the draftees. Milutin's reforms are regarded as a milestone in the history of Russia. They dispensed with the military recruitment and professional army that introduced by Peter the Great and created the Mushin, Russian army, such as it continued into the 21st century. Up to Dmitry Milutin's reforms in 1874, the Russian army had no permanent barracks and was billeted in dugouts and shacks. Let's hope he serves as well. Nice. If you want to hear about that one, please go right ahead. And now we have them available to do a lot of other stuff, which is pretty good. American Civil War, ex unus plodus. Cool. 
Russian sailors in Tsushima Samurai Clash. As the sailors landed at Tsushima Harbor, they were met by a mixed group of Japanese farmers and samurai. A battle ensued with one farmer being killed and one samurai captured along with numerous Japanese injuries. The Japanese samurai committed suicide, or seppuku, as the Japanese caught. Hope this doesn't have nefarious consequences. Observations of the American Civil War. As the American Civil War rages on in the West, some of our military advisors and officers have gone West in order to observe the battles that are taking place there. They will then take note of some of these battles and will use the knowledge to help our own nation. Great. New Santa Rafa will be nice. Introduce barracks. Yeah, let's go and do this one first. Introduce the barracks to the Russian army. Just because I want to get rid of this weekly manpower going away. So far, soldiers have been stationed in dugouts and shacks. But to prevent disease spread and attrition within our armies, we'll have to construct permanent barracks for our soldiers. Yeah, we're not going to barracks for your soldiers. That, means, that doesn't make any sense. Um, other than that, I mean, we're doing really just kind of okay. Just kind of hanging out. Um, I would like to see this one done. So let's finish this. Get this focus done. And if there's not a whole lot getting done. Oh, God. Um, then we'll probably just kind of skip ahead in time. Because I'd love to do all this. The Brest Litovsk Fortresses. That'd be good to do. Kronstadt would be nice. Domestic shipbuilding. Build some dockyards. We'll do that eventually. Baltic Supremacies. We'll get to that one a long time later. So, uh, Russian involvement in the American Civil War. We'll send a few ships to support the USA. Or we have no interest in this. Uh, what do we get? Enact docking rights? Naval support for the Union? Uh, do we want to sub the Union? Because last time I played as Russia, Prussia. Oh, urban growth attracts people to cities. When I played as Prussia, the Confederates won, even though we were on historical. God, this looks... Like I said before. I'll say it after this. A country has been industrializing for some time now, and the growing industry in Russian cities is attracting many people into the big cities, especially your capital. Uh, I wish you could divide this up more. Like, I wish you could cut Kentucky in half, cut, like, a little portion of Missouri off in Oklahoma, but it is what it is. Um. Wielopolsky government? Oh, boy. Uh. That really doesn't matter. Don't do that one. On the 27th of March, Alexander Wielopolsky was made the main director of the Government Commission of the Religion and Public Enlightenment. He wanted to keep the status quo on the matter of Polish independence, though he replaced Russian officials with Poles and planned to expand the Polish education. He also reformed the administration of Polish lands and restored the Council of the Kingdom of Poland. This might keep the Poles in check, which would be a good thing. Keep your people in check. Wait, naval support... Oh, oh, what the... We need more than four ships stationed in New York. We get a double bonus for research for naval doctrines and naval XP. All right, well, let's see what we can do. Let's go to New York. All the ships aboard as we are hopefully going to be able to leave. Oh, some ships are... Hmm. Oh, you're actually... Okay, Riesco... Oh, well, there goes the Argentinian Civil War. The American Civil War is a little more interesting, not going to lie. But it's all right. Corliss steam engine, not bad. Oh, we're not losing any more popularity. Soyuz. What does Soyuz mean? I forget what that means. Hmm. Extraction. Develop Russian homeland. An unorganized army is so bad to have. So bad. It says sort of construction speed, though, but hmm. It gives us so much political power. Over two a day right now. That's so strong. All right. We got enough ships for this. Uh, 31 ships. Come to New York City. Oh, looks like there's some land there. Oh, I wonder when Canada's going to reunify. Alright, let's go to Long Island. Follow it up with... The steam engine? Nice. Um... Ah, uh, mechanical production one. That'd be good. And then... Consumer goods. Well, this will build another factory. It'll be done in December. Jeez Louise, that's so long. Oof. We got a good amount of army XP though. Who says I like to convert these to like heavy cavalry? Yeah, you lose them. You lose all your reconnaissance, but I think overall it might be better. Maybe you get slightly more soft attack and breakthrough, but and HP, but still. And we'll see what happens. What are we out of? Cavalry equipment, infantry equipment, uniforms, just just normal stuff. So after this one, oh, this is another event. We're just gonna keep going on the way we're going. Encourage capitalism looks pretty good though. Hmm. I think we'll go ahead and do some hygiene first. I guess we will have to be hygienic if we have to. Doctor's orders. And we'll choose monthly population. No, that's all I had time. Uh, celluloids. Recon stuff. Dreams of flight. Air XP gain. Aviation. Socioeconomics. Yeah, I need to do more of this stuff. Let's grab this one. Saint Simeonism. 59 days. That ain't too bad. And revolvers. Sign us up. Please give me one of those. And which we'll do probably this one. Better designs for 2% more soft attack. 
Maybe let's just give you more defense, but I'll get this stuff done first. And it'll be done in two days, and give it done in one more days. Nice. All right, so let's go and choose uh, land redistribution, which no description here, so that'll be good. And then we'll, I'm going to go to read just the judiciary reforms. Okay, there's, I'm going to do that one off screen as well. And because we went a certain way, we can't limit the censorship, but we're, we're probably going to end censorship, which we lose political power, stability, but get more research speed. And here we have martial law in Congress Poland. Martial law was introduced in Congress Kingdom on the 14th of October, 1861, because of the growing unrest and clashes of the Russian army and the protesters. After it been introduced, Poles were forbidden to organize and take part in patriotic manifestations, though Poles didn't obey and still organize themselves, causing more fraction or more friction to exist between the protesters and the Russian government. Will they ever stop revolting? Probably not. And actually, after this one, as much as I want to end the censorship, which I will do eventually, maybe it's best to introduce something regarding the Poles, because the Poles, they're not bad. They're very industrious, hard-working people. But it has to be after 1864, so never mind. All right, whatever. Finlandia? We might want to do that, too, because, you know, the Finns are doing okay with us, though. They're, they're, kind, of, they're kind of okay with us, so maybe we'll wait. As much as I want to do this stuff... It, Probably really doesn't matter right now, especially the ship stuff. Build armies would be nice. Do we uh, keep nobility in the army? Or allow non-noble officers? Focus on defense. Focus on offense. The rules of war. Remove outdated military thought would be good to do. Abandon an inhumane punishment? Oh, there's a little bit of lag. Oh, boy. Studied Prussian designs. Not bad. Uh, judiciary reforms? I guess we're going to have to go that way. No, con no constitution with basic human rights. We don't believe in human rights here? What the heck? Human rights? Come on, man. Cool, but we'll see what happens next. And the founding of whites. Which sounds very weird taken out of context. The whites were a faction among the Poles insurrectionists operating in the years of 1861 to 64 in the territory of Congress Poland. The faction had its origins in the agricultural society founded by Andrzej Artur Zemyowski in 1858. They consisted mostly of progressive minded landowners and industrialists, the middle class, and some intellectuals. They postulated organic work, peaceful protests, and improvement of Russia, relations with Russia, Austria, and Prussia. Using diplomacy and legal ways, the whites were wanted to restore Polish autonomy within the Russian Empire and later full independence. Hopefully they won't make any trouble, but you never know about the whites. Like I said, things taken out of context could ruin careers. But anyways, whatever. We're still not doing this stuff. I'm, not much has really happened. Um, we did docker ships in New York City successfully. Look at all the resources we have and the resources that we do not have. It's almost 1862. How's the Civil War going on for the Americans? Um, well, they're pushing into Tennessee a little bit. But they're pushing... These guys are pushing into Missouri a little bit. And pushing into Oklahoma a wee bit. And... Virginia? Well, West Virginia, they didn't rebel. The Confederates broke over the river and actually took Annapolis. Annapolis, wow. Founding of the Reds. The Reds were a faction amongst the uh, Polish insurrections operating in 1863-64 to 64 in the territory of Congress Poland. They were radical democratic activists who support the outbreak of the uprising and advocated an end to serve them in Poland. Without compensation to the landlords, land reform, and other important social reforms, they were represented mostly by the radical circles of soon youth focused on Warsaw's medical surgical academy. Someone should watch over them. Probably. Probably. But, oh well. We do have 40 convoys. 33 factories? It's, it's really not much. But man, we are desperately trying to industrialize as fast as possible. If they could take DC, that'd be insane. Oh, they might push for the. Oh, that's where Knoxville is, huh? They might be able to uh, do an encirclement here. They're kind of nice. Oh, they, oh, they actually took. Put Paduka, which actually is very weird, because this that's a little area. I was wondering where that area was when um, you see all the, this little river here. That part of Kentucky it does not connect to Kentucky, except, you know, nat naturally. But the Imperial Security Service, the borderlands of Mother Russia, have grown increasingly dangerous as of late with bandits and marauders plundering and pillaging our frontier settlements. Thus, reform of internal security policy is necessary. One that will greatly expand its power to function on professional enforcer of the law. The ISS shall serve us well. And, and the censorship. We could do that. I'm going to wait. I want to do, do something about this stuff. Maybe the Ukrainians? I still need to do this stuff too. Uh, yeah. Infrastructure. That wouldn't be bad. I wouldn't really be doing too much with it though. Alaskan Gold Rush would be pretty good to get though. Railways. Uh, railways. Honestly, just with just talking about railways, I'm not really interested in doing that too much. Railways just doesn't seem very good. You don't get any more consumer goods or anything like this and stuff like that, so I don't really see a point in doing that yet. So, let's do Finlandia. Finland, also known as the Grand Duchy of Finland, is an important part of Russia. After all, we already share the same head of state. Might as well start on that, right? 
It's actually only 35 days, which is actually really, really nice. And they will do Malorossia. Ukraine, a little known as Little Russia, has been part of Russia for years, all until the 14th century or so. We even share the same language and culture. Ukraine simply means people at the frontier. And we have many of those. And someone recommends we go down with this one, so we'll probably go that way. We have social stratification, which gives us more consumer, not consumer goods, but political power, which is nice. Or, no, less political buys of cost and more stability, which is good. Workers' rights. Do they believe, do we believe in rights? Hmm... Let's do an industrial nation, in which we get some more uh, legislative power gain, more monthly population decryption. We don't believe in workers' rights just yet. Not yet. In time, maybe. But definitely not yet. That's not worth it yet. Ah, Finland. Rapid industrialization. And it happened, finish up within three years. That's not good. Okay, so, Agrarian reforms in Congress Poland. In the year of 1861 and 1862, Alexander Vilop. Vilopolsky made a few reforms regarding the status of peasantry in Congress Poland. He allowed the peasants to buy out themselves for an adequate sum of money and introduce common rentals for peasants. That should help the economy. So at least we got rid of the lowering of manpower every week, which is not, which is obviously very bad for us, especially since we're demobilizing anyways, which is not very good. Uh, we believe in parliamentary suffrage, which is not bad. I mean, that could be a lot worse. Did we get any new advisors here? No, we did not. Well, research and production. Let's see what we can do about that since we have enough of the stuff here. From the Hermit Kingdom, the East is changing. Oh boy. Uh, I guess we can do that one. Economics. Rifle manufacturers, weapons, artillery. Let's do that one. The Governor of Finland. The Governor of Finland has been adept in his handling of internal affairs in the Finnic nation, but his independence and self reliance suggest he does not respect the authority of the Tsar, and his rightful rule over all of the empire. Sacking it for replacement could prove wise to prevent separatism or calls for federalist reform, but it might cause uproar and instability in the region for years to come. Replace them? Keep the current one? Um. Hmm. Von Berg, huh? These guys are kind of handsome. Weekly manpower plus 50, that's not bad. Risk of fam, that's not good. Uh, does this affect us that much? Like. Okay, so Rakasovsky still has to be the governor of Finland. Okay, so we can abolish the Grand Duchy. Technically, they already are puppets, so. I'll replace them, why not? Let's see what we can do with these guys. Finland deserves to have their own diet as they have their own culture, language, and religion. So therefore, they must have their own local representation. So I guess we made the choice we made. Support foreign investment. We must get foreigners to invest in our empire. This way, they'll introduce innovative production methods to our country. You lose some political power. Finland gets investors invited. They lose consumer goods, but more construction speed, research speed for maybe four years. And then 35% uh, research bonus for mechanical engineering. Good for them. And then we'll probably do expand Helsinki's port. Helsingfors has a great potential to become the home to some of Russia's best dockyards and naval bases. Mechanical production 1, not bad. Uh, factory output, not bad. Construction speed would be really nice, but whatever. High speed steam engine, we'll go and just go and do that, it's fine. National funeral is gone, which is fine. What is this? Iron extraction? Uh, I really don't want to hurt that. But wow, look at that. We're fourth of the roll. Look at that. Industrial projection and military projection, not bad, even though we're not really developing that much of a military. Aviation, that doesn't help us at all too much, but eh, research speed helps out a little bit. Capital ships, it's all about them capital ships. And then we'll do some tanks. Armor company, very nice. Cool, so we've gotten everything that we can so far. Uh, and we're already 28 days into this, focus on bad. And after better designs, hopefully we can get some Enfield rifles, in which we need the breech loading mechanism. We don't have... That. Oh, oh, it's right there. Okay. You get more defense, you get more soft attack, which is nice. I would like to get some Gatling guns too, so because guns go burr. Another commander died. Oh, well. Give us more uh, weekly war support, maybe? It's 77% right now, which is not bad. Just, oh, with more war support, you get better just five war goals times. Did you know that? I think you actually get more attack on defense on core territory. I knew about the defense, I didn't know about the attack. Nice. We're going to get some breach loading mechanisms. Very good. And, oh, look at that. National funerals. Oh, that's what it looks like, huh? Okay, so the Confederates are still pushing into these guys. Wow. They're still fighting for Annapolis. Uh, they've actually pushed the Union soldiers out of Tennessee. And actually back into Kentucky. Lexington is a frontline city as well as Bowling... Oh, that's where Bowling Green is. I was wondering where Bowling Green was. Wait, Bowling Green is in Kentucky? I thought there was a bowling place here in Ohio. Hmm. Oklahoma's slowly losing. Oh, they actually took over Springfield. I, thought, I think I've been, I've been in Springfield, Missouri before. St. Louis is the front line city. This is kind of interesting watching what's going to happen here. 
That goes Buenos Aires. Not bad. Restabs your finished guides. Almost done. Kind of fun just watching everyone die and burn. I feel like an old Drew Dernil video now. Um, yeah. Does he, split? Does he still watch Hoi 4 videos? Hmm. Oh, hello. another tile. Oh, they actually lost Alexandria. Ooh, that's not good. Ooh. But after that, we're going to support some Finnish investments. I'm just kind of waiting to see if there's anything for Poland. Because we keep getting events for Poland and such, so... I don't know. But this would be really good to get done. Really good. Oh, the Empire, the Great Qing Empire. Good for you guys. What is this? 87% what? Oh, legitimacy. I completely forgot about that stuff. I don't know how that works. Eh, I kind of do, but not really. I'm not. I don't really pay attention to it, as you can tell. All right, and then support for investments with another just 70 day focus. So be it. Yeah, I gotta play as the Confederates. You know what? These guys might get nerfed someday. So the gas and corner, nice. I might actually want to play as a Confederate sometime. And led by good old Jefferson Davis, right? Not bad. Look at that. The American Civil War. Legislative power gain goes down, monthly population goes down, recruitable population factor goes up, invasion preparation time goes down by 70%, consumer goods goes up, the worst division recovery time as well as amphibious invasion speed, <clears throat> better entrenchment speed, better surrender limit, division defense, factory output, tension, declare tension war on us, reinforcement goes down, do they have the exact same thing maybe? Hmm. Wait. Revenue active 1861, but West Point Napoleonic thought. The Civil War shows the calamity of Napoleonic era thought in the modern day. Okay. Encourage new thought at West Point. Well, I'm not sure if you want to do that now. Well, I guess it makes more sense now than later. They're doing war with a rival. Anti-Irish sentiment. Nice. Uh, let's see. They get more attack, which is enough for them. Union army incompetency, which is probably why they're losing. They get more defense, but they're god off on attack. The Russians stand united. Our country is recently experiencing a period of peace and prosperity, and our people stand united under our flag. For now. Um, honestly, improve relations modifier. I don't really care. Just give us a PPU, even though that's pretty useless for us. Oh, they have the same benefits, probably, right? Uh, the wild mob poop trap. Ooh, Utah. How many Mormons we got? Oh, Brigham Young's still alive. Where's my Book of Mormon? Where is that thing? Working class exploitation. And then we've got... I did that? Oh, man, that'd be really cool if the Mormons or the Utah territory had their own focus tree. That'd be really cool. Uh, there's uh, the Crow and the Sioux. Sitting Bull, very cool. Oh, wait, are they in the American Civil War too? Oh, that's kind of cool. But they're not really fighting yet. Not a Christian pack for now. Haha. <laughs> Just wait till that gets broken. Cool. Industrial Society. Nice. And finally, we can maybe do rights. Do they deserve rights? Trade unions. I guess it could be worse. I guess ugh, if they have to have rights. With increasing power of industrialism, it's important that we protect our workers. I guess if we have to. I mean, don't get me wrong. Child labor is still really cool. And I don't want to get rid of that just because we get more construction speed, even though it does hurt our research. Plus 10% construction speed is actually pretty nice. Hey, fourth great power in the world. Look at that. Keep building, guys. You're doing a tremendous job. Industry, 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 industry. Other than that, everyone's been pretty quiet so far. Oh, my. This has got so much worse. How did you, how did you guys get out of here? Hey, you're, why are you blue? Tian Shun? This is a little mess. Then again, it, it is China. Who's the best at killing China? China. Not even the Japanese could take out the Chinese. You know who took out the Chinese? The Chinese took themselves out. Uh, okay, so the Union actually is invading more of the West Virginians. That's good to know. They broke over the river, maybe. Oh, they lost Annapolis. That's not good. Uh oh, the Union's coming back. The Union's snapping back. Oh boy. We really could use more howitzers. Hmm. And horses. We just don't have the military industry. Uh, Prussia didn't have a lot of industry either, but definitely better than Russia. Oh, we got... Oh, this is a costume thing is done. Nice. We got another court. Support foreign investments. And we shall expand Helsinki's port. Yes. Another similar focus. It doesn't seem like we're going to get too much about polls, but as soon as I do fade and fade out, we'll probably get another event for them. Well, we're... Like I said, going off screen to come back, I mean... There's always another event. New Michael Palace is completed, though. The grand new Michael Palace has been completed after five years of construction. Designed by Andrei Stockenschneider and built on the palace and Bankman in St. Petersburg, the palace is meant for the numerous children of the late Nicholas I. This palace is extravagant and represents the wealth of our countries very well. It's all for you now, your highness. What a great piece of architecture, which is really cool. Just because we've got so much PP, let's go invest some more in, just in case. 
And yeah, we can't advance the machinery yet, but we'll get there soon enough. And as we're still trying to expand, Helsinki's port, even though we're third place in the world now. But censoring fathers and sons? Russian Bulletin has sent its new March-April issue to the censor department. That would be the usual publication if it hadn't had the new Turgenev's novel inside calling fathers and sons. It's an idea. Its idea is rotating around nihilism, an ideology of a denial of every authority and even somewhat revolution or revolutional. It can be dangerous enough for our aristocracy, which already supports liberal ideals. We can give the order, and this book will be completely different, but Turgenev will be completely disappointed in our government. He's one of the most loyal writers of our motherland, and it would be a tall loss. But what if the ghosts... What if they go soft with this novel and just let it be? Of course, there'll be some mimics who call themselves nihilists, but isn't it what we want to make them think? Just ensure that they are loyal, being initiative and innovative isn't a crime in Russia. It is not the Nikolai era after all, let's not be too strict. Uh, more anarchism, legislative power gain. It's better to censure this nihilism, unless we, else we suffer from crazy, crazy idealists raised in the book. Uh, let's go with that one. Anarchism, that's an ideology? Well, I guess, take, well, you know, someone in the comments might be like, yes it is. You know, I didn't know there was an ideology in this this mod. Chauvinist populism sounds like a lot of fun. But we also have... Oh, there's... Mikhail Bakunin. It's not Bukharin. Not Bukharin. Bakunin. Cool. All right, then. Cool. And expand some of the port. How's the Civil War raging on now? Well... Seems like, oh, even a little part, part of Illinois has been taken over by the Confederates. Oh, and Apples is back, though. Oh, that's... I always wondered where Harper's Ferry was. No one is close to D.C. No wonder. And we got about two weeks left here, too. Look at that. No workday limit. That actually doesn't help us that much. You know what? Cap and growth is nice. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Actually, before we do that, though, let's take a look at what could be... The 14-hour workday. Um, that's not bad. Let's say probably got a 12-hour workday. Wow, we need a thousand political power to do this. Holy crud! 10-hour workday. Eight-hour workday. We actually get we lose some resources. Well, let's do this one first. We cannot integrate Finland, which sucks. But oh well. And Malo Russia, Russia. Nice. We'll do that one. Let's go do this one. Why not? We're going to go from no hour work days, maximum work hours. Uh, we both. We went from no max maximum work hours to eight hour work hours. You gotta love the Tsar, right? You gotta love the Tsar. Okay, spend some more on this. Why not? Oh, expand the naval base. Uh, you know what? This might make them a little bit more happy. So just go and do that. Whatever. We're third in the world for industry, which is not bad. I'm just waiting for anything else here. Well, let's take a look at the Civil War before we uh, leave. Wow. That's not bad. But man, the Confederates are looking pretty darn strong here. And Young Russia is published. A group of students have published an article titled Young Russia Today. The article states that reform is necessary to survive as a country, and the optimal method for reform is the revolution of the people, and total seizure of power away from us, the monarchs. Smash them? Mm, smashing young people? I don't know. Only if they're legal. Anyways, wow, this got really bad. They even invaded Indiana. Look at that. What is that? Evansville? Is Evansville over there? I thought Evansville was down, more like down here. But maybe that's just me. Bowling Green's been taken out. Lexington's been taken out. The South is doing well, even though they did a little bit more of uh, West Virginia. So, hold on. Let's take a look. Can we see the casualties maybe for this? Because it's got to be incredibly bloody. How is this not a major conflict? What the heck? 160,000 versus 200,000. That's not bad. They actually might have more divisions, potentially. Can they actually make an encirclement here? Oh, they're moving up to Indianapolis. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And currently, we're doing Pramot Drahavmanov. Mil Milhailo Drohamanov is a Ukrainian economist, historian, and a theorist who stresses the importance of Ukrainian autonomy. The emperor agrees with him, and it's time to give him a position in the Russian bureaucracy. We should get more social egalitarianism. We'll give him as an advisor, so which isn't too bad. And we'll probably do the granary of Europe. <clears throat> Ukraine is a land of plenty, full of wheat, which we can export to all of Europe and beyond, and then protect Crimea. The Crimean War must not be repeated. We shall fortify Crimea as it is our first line of defense against the Turks. Which actually probably is a really, really important thing to do, so. You never know what the, the Ottoman Empire is going to do, so. Um, we can't even support that, so. Maybe we'll throw you guys here instead. Even though, can we really support you guys here either? Maybe not. And we're still just building. Just building, building, building. But I think I'm done fading and fading in and fading out, so. But I, I'm really interested in seeing how the Civil War... They made an encirclement. An encirclement. Look at that. Nice. 
Oh, they're branching back out. Oh, boy. Charleston's under fire. God, I'd hate to be Abraham Lincoln right now. Look at that Illinois line. Wow. And the granary of Europe. Agriculture in Kharkov and Poltava. Not bad. Just in case, we'll do that again. Because I, I just don't know what to do with our PP. Um, Siberian colonization. Anything else here? No. Bears and exhibitions. Screw it. We'll do that one. Uh, the necessary paperwork has been filled out, and the, ho the host city is ready to take on the task to prepare for the upcoming World Fair for the next five months. We'll take the necessary steps in, or decisions in order to make the World Fair as successful as possible. Very, very nice. Review the budget. Sure. In order to successfully host the World's Fair, we must assign an appropriate budget. The higher the budget, the more we will impress foreign visitors and prove the prestige of our country. But we should make sure not to ruin ourselves with spending more than we can possibly get into debt. Yeah, let's not do that. Spare no expenses. Review the main buildings. And an important part of a World Fair is designing the main buildings in an adequate fashion. We can always use a focus on style and to hire the top architects in order to impress visitors, or alternatively, we can focus on using the newest technology and construction materials to impress the world with our industrial achievements. Lastly, we have a lot of money and resources. We can opt to make the venues as lavish as possible through the aesthetic and technological values, though this may be questionable. Uh, make it as big and luxurious as possible. Invite the participants. Yes, please. Let's go and do that. We'll do this once, probably never again in this campaign. The great game doesn't interest us until... Actually, next year, which is not bad. The preparations are complete. The planning, design, and construction phases of the World's Fair and its venues are now all over. And the time has come to inaugurate the World Fair to the wider world. Nice. The St. Petersburg, the Sankt Petersburg, 1863. Not bad. Very nice. I'm not sure that gave us anything. Maybe we still have 41 prestige, 411 industrial projection, 411 military projection, no technological progression, which kind of sucks, but whatever. There goes Hawaii Rebellions. And, oh, well, that's done already. But how's this going along? Ohio has been invaded. Oh, they they got pushed down in Indi in Indiana. They actually pushed a little bit into North Texas. That's just still anyone's civil war. Oh, they just got back Charleston. I'd hate to live here, man, during this time period, but boy. The question of Branka. Margaret Alexander Vilopolsky has come with an idea to conscript Polish people connected to independence movements into our army. As long as they don't station in Congress Poland, nothing should happen. Now the question is what we should do. If we don't want to conscript them and allow them more, perhaps the unrest will just fade by itself, but this might not be the case, as tensions continue to grow day by day. Um, let's see, just wait for the situation. We won't have any rebels just walking around conscript them? We should be harsh as possible over the revolts. Let's just wait till the situation comes down. Conscripting them sounds like a bad idea. And I'll do it anyways, why not? I'll see what happens. We're trying to be nice to the Poles, eventually. These guys might be encircled, maybe? Maybe not? Hmm. Oh, they actually were completely kicked out of Indiana. The, the Union has taken back Lexington, but... Honestly, like... Does, you, does the South have this as a core? It's hard to tell. It's actually really hard to tell. Uh, judicial Branch. They still have that one. Which doesn't seem like King Simpson is going to go where. The World's Fair concluded, though. Actually, that that's actually a little bit better. That used to be worse. We have reports coming from our soldiers that people which were supposed to be conscripted by, uh, by us were missing, with some resisting the Bronca and others injured, killed, and our soldiers and fled. Some of our soldiers have already seen suspicious gatherings of people. It looks like something's happening. It won't be good. Place Poland. That'd be kind of cool. But the World's Fair concluded. After a whole month of running, the World's Fair has been concluded. Now it begins a per repurposing the exhibition venues. The fair was a rather mediocre success. Not anything out of the ordinary, or exceptional, and we can, but hope that this will be reinforced international standing and our credibility. Hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to rehost a fair, and make a better one. Very nice. What do you mean? We spent as much as we could. We got 67 procedure now. What do you mean? Revolts in Poland? No, we don't believe in revolts in Poland. We're trying to help them out, and we're going to put them down now. Oh well, time for the best part of the episode: of putting down the poles. Well, first, let's make sure our infantry are over here too. So. And what's the next one going to be done? Ten days, trade unions, if we have to have trade unions, and rights, I guess. People want rights? Jeez, they're so demanding. Uh, let's actually get you guys out here, then. People want rights? Do they deserve rights? Rights? Alright, get them out, get them out, get them out, get them out, get them out. The war starts. Another uprising. Three, two, one. Oh god, this is ugly. Holy crap, this is really not good. I'm going to send you guys down here just in case. This is incredibly ugly. I did not know it would be this bad. Holy crud, Arenos. I 
Are they? Yep, they're definitely moving. Um, if you guys can move in, that'd be great. This looks really, really bad, though. Which means Austrians might get some Polish rebellions too. Les Miserables has been. Well, Victor Hugo's book, Les, Les Miserables, is a masterpiece. Uh, even read by monarchs all over the world, it should not be shown to the public eye now that it's being translated, Your Highness. Reading the book may give those foolish peasants the wrong idea, if you know what I mean. All of Alexander II's advisors. Strength is ignorance. Daily collectivist socialism support. Merciability. Well, I guess it is what it is. We still need to have free speech here and stuff, but still. Socialism can't really quite do that yet. Neocontalism? Kantianism. Okay. I mean, you guys want to. You could probably just kill that division off. Goodbye, Poles. Bye. You can definitely cut those guys off, too. Warsaw, come on down here. Radom? You guys can do that, too, probably. And and they are dying. Ah, no Polish uprising here today, my friends. No, 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 no. Maybe tomorrow. Hopefully, maybe again tomorrow. I kind of like it back in the polls. Opposition returns. That's not good. When is it not a good idea to attack the polls? The greater of Europe. And protecting Crimea. Because you never know if we have to do the Crimea war again. Radom, eh? Good job. Suffering attrition a little bit. Um, I'm gonna have you guys actually go back out and just kind of hang out like around here. Protect Russia, please. We've lost four, 500 versus 35,000 poles. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Uh, Ivan, you have any upgrades? He's an organizer. That's good. That's good. Do you have any upgrades to Constantine? No. All right, whatever. Just do the best you guys can. No rush. No rush. Just do the best you can. Everyone gets a, a trophy when we're done here. A trophy to hunt poles. Man, that sounds really bad. But whatever. I maybe get through one more folks before we call it an episode. Oh, good. Goodbye, son. Oh, we got the uniforms. Thank you for the uniforms. How dare you revolt? Oh crap, they're not even core now. Uprising suppressed. Today our brave soldiers have finally destroyed the last pockets of resistance against the Great Tsar, and the uprising has been suppressed for Mother Russia. Actually, I kinda like that. Can we do that again? That was a lot of fun. Oh, develop agriculture in Kharkov. Develop agriculture in Poltava. Okay, why not? The Suez Canal construction. I don't really care. It's 97% of the way done. Great game. Not Don't really care either right now. Religious affairs, no. Diplomatic actions, no. Game options, no. Siberian colonization is still going great. We've got the steam locomotive, finally. Grab steam locomotive, too, because we can. And where else were we at here? We could do that extraction, but it doesn't really matter right now. Protect Crimea. And after that one, we'll probably go ahead and do... Improve the logistic system. Logistics were always a struggle in Russia, and we will solve this problem by copying the logistics of France, Britain, and other countries. But more research first, shall we? We finally got a better rifle. Well, let's grab, um... Catling guns? No. This one? No. Uh, camels, maybe? Organization loss moving? Sure. Minus 10% is not too bad. And let's make sure we get some better guns. Go protect and me. I doubt we'll get anything here. So let's end the episode here. If you enjoyed the episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will continue exploring what will happen, especially seeing if the Confederates win the Civil War, even though they've broken, the U.S. has broken through Texas and Oklahoma, even though they got encircled in Memphis. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.